The village of Blissfield in Lenawee County, Michigan is home to the Adrian and Blissfield Railroad Company, a holding company that operates five different Class III railroads in the Lower Peninsula. The short line is known for its classic roster of EMD GP9 locomotives. Nicknamed the Old Road, the a and operates the original route of the Erie and Kalamazoo, the first railroad constructed west of the Alleghenies. On May 3, 2016, we were on location to record EMD GP9's 1759 and 1752 on an ethanol train from Riga to an interchange point with the Indiana and Ohio Railroad at Petersburg, Michigan. This was a test run, with the A&B exercising trackage rights over the Genesee and Wyoming subsidiary in an effort to streamline the interchange process between the two companies. At Riga, ADBF number 1223, an EMD SW9 locomotive, was used to move the ethanol train from the Green Plains ethanol plant to the siding west of town so that the two GP9 locomotives could tie on to the east end of the train. Riga is a small, unincorporated town located to the east of Blissfield, where the old road ends, with the line removed between Ottawa Lake and the INO interchange. Green Plains opened its Riga ethanol plant in 2007, creating over 70 jobs. The facility encompassed 78 acres of land and quickly became one of the largest customers on the Adrian and Blissfield Railroad. The facility processed locally grown corn with 20 million bushels producing 60 million gallons of ethanol per year. The plant was acquired by Valero in 2018 as part of a $300 million package that included two other facilities. To the dismay of local farmers, Valero closed the facility in November of 2019. This was a huge blow to the local economy and the Adrian and Blissfield Railroad. It's uncertain if a potential buyer will be able to bring back production at the facility to previous levels.
While waiting for the A and B to take the interchange track at Riga, we observed a weed sprayer truck traveling north on the I and O main line. Clearing vegetation is an important part of track maintenance because it eliminates potential tripping hazards and helps make signage more visible to employees and communities. Since much of the A and B's inbound cars to the I and O are covered hoppers loaded with grain, seeds, or fertilizer, seeds often spill along the right of way. After the main was clear, the A and B crew eased their train onto the I and O main line. This was the first and only time the A and B ever pulled a train to Petersburg. There, the crew dropped off the loads and picked up empties in the siding, completing the interchange with the I and O.
After a short journey northeast, the train was seen crossing Teal Road in Petersburg. Back in 2016, the A&B was under the ownership and management of then-President Mark Dabronski, who had a terrible reputation for being hostile to the rail fan community. In fact, Dabronski employed a full-time railroad police officer that frequently harassed and followed rail fans while they chased trains along the short line's right-of-way. Even if they weren't trespassing, the officer would often question individuals about what they were photographing, issuing stern warnings, and making many people feel uncomfortable. We were not immune to this treatment and were followed to Petersburg. Although the officer was friendly, we didn't appreciate being tailed all day and decided to end our chase in Petersburg without following the train back to Blissfield. Thankfully, the A&B is now owned and operated by Transportation Holdings, a company that is very friendly to the railfan community. That evening, after chasing the freight train and visiting the Blissfield Model Railroad Club, we caught the old road dinner train, passing the unique grade crossing signals at North Lane Street. Until the COVID-19 pandemic of 2020, the short line operated the popular Old Road Dinner Train on Saturday nights throughout most of the year. The train was known for its fine food and murder mystery dramas portrayed by local actors and comedians. The railroad also operated Easter Bunny specials and Christmas-themed trains. In 2013, we chased the old road dinner train on a pleasant September evening. Throughout its last decade of operation, the train was almost exclusively powered by GP9 number 1752. Built by the Electromotive Division of General Motors in 1957, the classic road switcher is of central Vermont heritage. 
It, along with GP9 number 1751, was acquired from Grand Trunk Western. It escaped the trunked GP9 Battle Creek rebuild program of the late 80s and early 90s and was sold to the A&B for a sum of $50,000. Back in 1993, in an effort to put the short line on the map, the railroad's founders devised a plan to decorate the 1752 in a special Lionel Lines paint scheme. Dick Kuhn owned the Michigan-based model train company and at the time was friends with owners of the A&B. He signed off on the agreement and even gave the short line special privileges to sell merchandise that featured 1752 in the Lionel-inspired paint scheme. Thanks to the creative marketing ploy, the tiny short line was featured in virtually every railroad, rail fan, and model train publication in North America. When the licensing agreement ended in the mid-90s, the Lionel name was removed, but the locomotive remained in the patriotic red, white, and blue colors until it was finally repainted into the company's lightning stripe scheme in 2005. At Main Street, the train passed by the Blissfield West Station, where several high school girls were taking prom photos. The dinner train operated at the blistering speed of 5 miles per hour, which meant that if you walked fast enough, you could actually outpace the train on foot. Although we never tried it, we can't say that we never considered it. In addition to the dinner train in Lenawee County, the ADBF also operated the Charlotte Southern Dinner Train in Eaton County. It too shut down due to the pandemic with an uncertain future. Unlike the A&B's old road line in Lenawee County, the Charlotte Southern has no freight business. The Charlotte Dinner Train operated on less than four miles of track and was pulled by the last GE 44-ton switcher ever built. The locomotive and passenger cars were last used in March of 2020 and remain stored at Charlotte. It's unknown whether or not transportation holdings will resume the operation of these trains, but we hope that one day they'll pull passengers again on both lines. Jumping back to 2016, we returned to Blissfield on September 20th to chase this short westbound train between the railroad's namesake communities.
At Lenaway Junction, we caught number 1752 from above. The junction is where the A and B runs around their old road dinner train before returning east to Blissfield. At Adrian, 1752 slowly pulled by the company's engine house. Adrian was once a busy hub for the New York Central, Wabash, and DTNI. Today, the only steady source of train traffic is Norfolk Southern's old Wabash Main Line between Detroit and Kansas City. The A and B interchanges with Norfolk Southern throughout the week using a short section of the original DTNI Main Line.
In late October, we returned to Adrian to record Norfolk Southern Train 120 crossing the A&B's Diamond from the former Wabash Railroad Depot on the east side of town. We were not impressed with the unfriendly conductor who made an offensive gesture as the locomotive went by our cameras. One-twenty is a daily Kansas City to Detroit manifest freight, with the bulk of its loads being auto parts for several Motor City manufacturing plants. Exactly one month later, we visited Adrian late at night to record Canadian Pacific's annual holiday train running on the Detroit district. As of 2023, CP continues to utilize trackage rights over NS to reach Chicago, operating trains over the Wabash Main Line between Detroit, Michigan and Butler, Indiana. Setting up at the depot, we caught local train B67 making a shove move over East Maumee Street. After the local cleared, it was time for the holiday train. Hundreds of people gathered by the depot to watch it roll on by. Hey, get over. No, we just saw with the holiday train, maybe it's the ditch lights with Blake. In addition to the holiday train, Adrian occasionally sees special passenger trains on Norfolk Southern.
Back in 2014, we caught Nickel Plate Road 765, pulling a 21st century steam excursion between Fort Wayne and Detroit on the south side of town. Jumping forward to New Year's Eve 2017, we caught train 120 at the depot once again with an Admiral Cab SD40-2 on the point. The last regularly scheduled passenger train to make a stop at Adrian was the famous Wabash Cannonball on April 30, 1971. For the next 50 years, the depot was used as an office and storage facility by both Norfolk and Western and later Norfolk Southern Maintenance of Way departments. Combined with a lack of care for the building by its owner, nature took its toll on the depot to the point of making it unusable. As a result, Norfolk Southern demolished the structure on July 7, 2021. On March 15, 2017, we chased train JL1 on the Jackson and Lansing Railroad, a subsidiary of the Adrian and Blissfield, with 47 miles of track in Jackson and Ingham counties. The short line typically operates train JL1 between Holt and Jackson at night, but on this day it was delayed due to an issue with the crossover at CP Jackson.
C.P. Jackson is located at Michigan Central Station on the Amtrak Michigan Line. The station is known for being the oldest continuously operated rail station in America, which opened on September 1, 1873. We caught train JL-1 passing by the station on the freight lead as it crossed over both mains to the Lansing Secondary. Amtrak station agent Brian Karhoff paid careful attention to the train as it made its way through the crossover. Karhoff hired on with Amtrak in 1974 and retired in 2018.
The coil cars on this train were for RSDC Manufacturing and Holt, the short line's biggest customer. RSDC was founded in 1998 to support the automotive industry and for many years was the primary steel processor for one of America's top three automakers. During that time, RSDC launched over 50 vehicle platforms and developed the online inventory management system that has set a standard for industry reporting requirements. It has since expanded to other industries specializing in coiled steel. JL serves RSDC five days per week and delivers between 15 and 20 cars to Holt every morning. Chris Bagwell, president of Transportation Holdings, was quoted in a recent interview found in Railfan and Railroad Magazine as saying, quote, RSDC is hungry for growth. They have internal marketing teams who are always looking for new opportunities to expand their business. Our Class 1 connections with CN, CSX, and NS allow us to remain competitive, providing customers like RSDC with a myriad of options to ship or receive products from anywhere in North America, end quote. In Rives, several rail fans were trackside to document the rare daylight move. Rives is where the Grand River Valley line once connected with the Lansing Secondary. From Rives to Jackson, the two lines were joined as a double track. Rives was also home to the Michigan United Railway Interurban Line, which crossed over the top of the Grand River Valley on a wooden trestle. The inner urban depot still survives and was left standing when Michigan United abandoned and removed its line in 1929. Today, the right-of-way is used as an access road by Consumers Energy.
Leslie's Michigan Central Depot was built at the turn of the 20th century. Passenger service ended in 1959, and in recent history, the depot has been home to a popular bar and grill. EMD GP9 number 1758 was built in 1956 for the Pennsylvania Railroad, making the engine over 60 years old. 1760 was also built for the Penzi one year prior. The 1758 retains a Leslie RS3L air horn with a dead 25 bell, while 1760 is equipped with an old cast Nathan P5.
Mason was the last location we caught train J01 before the crew tied the train down at RSDC just a few miles north near Holt. Hope you enjoyed our coverage of the Adrian and Blissfield Railroads lines in Lenaway, Jackson, and Ingham counties. From a ragtag team of railroad enthusiasts wanting to run a dinner train to the five property system it is today, the A and B is a prime example of what it means to be a success story. When a Class 1 carrier can't satisfy the needs of smaller customers on branch lines, Class 3s like the A and B are often capable of rebuilding lost relationships between the shipper and receiver. Thank you for watching Delay in Block Productions. Until next time, happy railroading.